By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's episode, I am playing against Matt Strott, the one who actually designed the Timmy Talks logo. So maybe that's nice to know, a great graphic designer. Uh, and he's bringing a pretty cool deck to the table as well, a deck completely built around Gauntlet of Might. And I've called the deck, well, he's called the deck actually, Gauntlet Red, which makes absolute sense. And I'm playing against him with a deck called Earth, Wind and Fire. And yes, it is an Elementals deck. And yes, it contains Water Elemental, Earth Elemental and Fire Elemental. Actually, it also has Air Elemental in there. It's blue, it's red, it's just tons of fun. And and yeah, we, we played against each other. These games, man, they're really worth your while. I really, really enjoyed playing uh, with you, Matt. Thank you for the matches. And before I just go on to the deck deck section, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also choose what you want to see first and when you want to see it. And you can do that by using the timestamps in the description below. So one of the timestamps reads MTG games. If you click on there, you go directly to the games. You can also choose to see specific deck decks. Maybe you want to see the deck of Matt first, just click on um, Gauntlet Red deck deck. Or if you want to see my deck first, go for my deck, you know. So the timestamps kind of give you the ability to go through the uh, the video kind of like chapters in a book. So whatever you want, the order, it is all up to you. And also in the description below, you can find more information about the rule set and, you know, basically everything else you want to know. And if there's still information missing, feel free to leave a comment in the description below talking about that. It's always appreciated if you like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Welcome. And now let's start with the deck deck. We're going to start with the deck of my opponent, Matt, today, Gauntlet Red. And here we see the deck of Matt Gauntlet Red. And this whole deck is built around Gauntlet of Might. Now, this is just such a cool artifact that I wish I would own. It's so cool. It's, it's four to cast. Uh, it reads, all red creatures gain plus one, plus one. And all mountains provide an extra red mana when tapped. So... It is just really unique because when you're the only player playing with red, it kind of gives you this one-sided mana flare effect, which is really cool. And it also pumps your creatures. Now, the downside of this matchup for Matt is that I'm also playing with red. But still, it's going to be much better for him than it's going to be for me. And the reason for that is that, of course, he's built his deck around this card. So you know when you play this card that you're going to have a lot of red mana. So that means that you're... X spells become better. Now, what can you do in red with X spells? Ooh, that's difficult. <laughs> you know, you can burn, burn, burn. You know, you can just burn the whole house down. I mean, look at his list. He's got three disintegrates. Um, he's got a detonate in there as well. He's got four earthquakes, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so he's going all the way. And what I also like, he's playing with chain lightnings because, of course, the chain lightning is sorcery from legends. You deal three damage to a target and then you know for two red you can send your opponent can send it back right the cool thing is that then matt can then send it back by just tapping one red mountain when he's got a gauntlet of might on the battlefield so that might actually be something that could happen in our matchup since i'm also playing with red so we could have this chain light chain going on and just we keep burning each other or killing each other's creatures that could be interesting what i also like is the inclusion of fork in this build because a fork is you know two red to cast for an interrupt and now, of course, with Gauntlet of Might on a battlefield, um, you know, what it does, you only have to pay one mountain uh, to play that fork. So that's going to be interesting. And just fork in general is just a really cool card. Uh, it reads copy target instant or sorcery spell, except that copy is red. And you may choose new targets for the copy. So it's, it's an instant now, right? But originally it's an interrupt. And the cool thing is in old school, this card used to be banned. It's no longer banned um, or restricted. I mean, it's no longer restricted. So you can just play with four of these guys. And it's actually really good um, against power. You know, power, somebody plays Ancestral Recall against you and you're in red. So whatever can you do? And you're like, well, you know what? I'm not going to red Elemental Blast it. I've got something better. I'm going to play a fork and I'm going to just copy your Ancestral Recall. But also when somebody plays like a Demonic Tutor, you know what? I'm going to tutor for a card too with Fork. I think Fork is just such a diverse card. And and yes, you need to have the right moment to play it. But in old school, there are just so many powerful sorceries and instants that see ridiculously amounts of play that it's actually kind of worth playing a Fork. So yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool to see Fork in action in this matchup. And I'm also playing with Fork in my deck, by the way, so we can kind of fork it out. Another inclusion that I really think is fl flavorful here is Wall of Fire. So Wall of Fire 
an O5 wall for two red and one, but for one red, you can give it plus one plus O. And it's just really flavorful, of course, with again, the Gauntlet of Might, because he can tap one mount mountain, he can gain two red. So for one mountain, he can give plus two, plus O to his wall of fire. Talking about that pump effect, you can see the dragons in this deck. Of course, he's playing with Dragon Whelp and the Sheevan Dragon, and he can pump them into eternity like this. This deck, I think, if, if he has Gauntlet of Might on, on the battlefield long enough, he's going to demolish me. So it's basically going to be my job to try to get rid of the Gauntlet of Mites. That's going to be kind of important for me. And of course, in the sideboard, we also see Blood Moons, which is really good when you're playing uh, a mono color yourself that makes Blood Moon even better. And that could actually cause a problem for me. So this is the deck of Matt Strott. Now let's take a look at my deck, Earth, Wind and Fire. And here we see my deck, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And I really just built this deck out of my love for the big, chunky, elemental creatures in the game of old school magic. You know, when I started in the revised era, I always loved Earth Elemental, Fire Elemental, Air Elemental, Water Elemental, because they're, they're big, they're impressive. You know, I like the art of most of them. I have to say Water Elemental is still one of those that I'm not a huge fan of, but... It, does, it is kind of funny, right? When you look at the art, you think Water Elemental is kind of the man in the boat. At least that's what I thought at first. And then you see that little wave and that's actually the Water Elemental. And I've always thought, okay, there are so many cool ways to depict a Water Elemental and this is what they went for. And in a way, I kind of love that about old school art as well, that sometimes it's just kind of goofy. So I guess I like it because of that. But when I'm looking at the art of Fire Elemental, Air Elemental, Earth Elemental, I guess Air Elemental is my favorite out of those, but still like Fire Elemental iconic and Earth Elemental has this, you know, this sumo wrestling theme going on. It's really cool. So yeah, the, just the elementals in general. And I think many of you will probably agree, agree with me that they're quite iconic. And also just the idea that when you're piloting this deck, you're actually controlling the elements. You know, you are, for me, that's being like an uber wizard, right? You gotta be one of the most powerful wizards ever if you can control all these elements in your magic. I mean, that's just very impressive. What I wanna do with this deck, just kind of going into the mechanics, is actually quite simple. You do, you do see those four mana volts there, right? So what I wanna do is turn one mana volt, turn two, get my second blue or second red, and kind of hope that works out. And then I just wanna put uh, one of the elementals on the table. That's all I wanna do. And then turn three in a perfect world, I would probably cast uh, Energy Flux or have a counter spell on hand to protect my elemental. W one of the two. And the reason I'm saying Energy Flux is that Energy Flux is just a great weapon against power decks. As you can see, this is an underpowered deck. It's completely revised. So maybe it's also nice to know. So if you've got a lot of revised cards, you can actually make this or probably. You do need some duels and some mana volts, but still. Um, and, you know, so I want to cast my elemental turn two. Turn three, I want to get an Energy Flux on the table so that... I have to pay, you know, Energy Flux is an enchantment that says every artifact now has an upkeep cost of two. So I'm not going to pay the upkeep cost for my Mana Volt. So my Mana Volts are going to die to the Energy Flux, so I don't take any damage from them. Um, and like I said, the other option is, of course, uh, to protect my Elementals with Counter Magic. That's another important part of the deck, right? In an ideal situation, because I've got, you know, I've got the burn to deal with creatures and I've got big creatures to deal with creatures. I know it's kind of old fashioned, but you actually don't need a lot of removal when you've got good old fashioned combat. You know, when you're playing with a lot of fatties, you can just kill creatures with your own fatties. And of course I'm playing with uh, with four lightning bolts here. I'm playing with the fireball disintegrate. So that gives me some options. I've got two stone rains. I can board in some extra stone rains from my sideboard to get rid of those uh, pesky mazes of if that you sometimes encounter. Obviously, if um, if this deck would have been like, if I would have used other cards than just revised cards, you could easily upgrade this with uh, City of Brasses, with of course the two Moxen, uh, but also with uh, uh, Bat Moons, uh, sorry, Blood Moons, because Blood Moons are just great against those annoying mazes of if. So you could do all that, but I've chosen to go fully revised. So it's not in this deck, but if you like this deck and you maybe want to play it with some bigger card pool, then those would be my first tips to kind of upgrade the deck. So um, yeah, I just really want to overwhelm my opponent with all my elementals. That's, I just want to cast fatties and, and, and put them sideways and attack because I think that's just the coolest, one of the coolest things you can do in Magic. There are more things to do than just that, but it's definitely one of the most rewarding just putting big fat creatures on the board and attack. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, by the way. 
And I'm also playing, boys and girls, with fork. So I know my opponent is playing with fork. I'm playing with fork. So we're going to have a fork party, I hope. I'm only playing with one fork, though. So he's playing with two, I believe. So he's he's got the upper hand when it comes to forking. But we'll see. And of course, I'm playing also with uh, earthquake. So I'm also playing with two earthquakes, which I think is very flavorful when you're also playing earth elemental, right? I should be able to, to create... If a wizard can cast an earth elemental, a wizard should be able to cast an earthquake. That's my theory, you know, I just think that uh, that makes sense. And I love it when decks make sense. So anyway, I'm rambling on, um, and this is my deck. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of our decks. We'd love to hear from you. And now we are ready to go to the game. So let's take a look at Gauntlet Red versus Earth, Wind and Fire. Game number one, here we go. So as you can see, we both have the same playmat. Um, there's actually a video about this playmat. I'll, uh, I'll make a little info card you can click on there and you can see the history behind this playmat. So it looks like we're first rolling to see who gets to start. It looks like Matt has won it. Starting with a basic mountain passing turn. There's an island from my side. Second mountain from Matt. And we don't see a mana vault uh, played by me. So ideally I want to have that mana vault turn one. It looks like I can't really do anything here. Just passing turn. Maybe keeping a counter spell on. I wonder if I'm going to counter this. I'm not doing it, so perhaps I don't have a counter spell. That's a Gauntlet of Might played by Matt. I'm playing my fourth land. Tapping four here. I wonder what it could be. Actually changing my mind again. Maybe a Brain Geyser for two or something? Tapping red and a blue. And, oh, of course, because of the Gauntlet, I only have to tap one Mountain. And I'm playing an Energy Flux, trying to put a little bit of pressure they're on that Gauntlet of Might. Of course, the problem is with the Gauntlet, he's got so much mana that it's not really impressing Matt a lot. And now I am playing out the Air Elemental for five, which is possible because of the Gauntlet of Might and passing turn to Matt here. So I wonder what he's going to do in response. I'm expecting him to burn this away. Yeah, there's a, ooh, Disintegrate and a Fork on there. So he's and killing my Air Elemental and dealing seven damage. So look at that, I'm on 13, and I'm playing another Energy Flux. Trying to stop Matt here a little bit, but that Energy Flux is just not working very well against the Gauntlet, and I really would have preferred to have a Shatter in this, uh, in this particular case. Playing another land, and it looks like I'm tapping 5 again for another Elemental. This time it's a Fire Elemental. Let's see if this uh, this Fire Elemental can stick here. Five cards in hand, as you can see, with the dice I'm using. And there's an Earthquake. Okay. <laughs> so, so far, everything is getting burned away. Look at that. I'm on four now after that Earthquake. Man, this is definitely the red zone for me. Playing another Energy Flux. Look at that. I don't think Matt's going to mind me much. He's just going to tap one extra land. Who cares? And he can just burn me out here. He can kill me on the spot, probably. He's going to do some tapping. And yeah, Earthquake. That's it. Or do I have a counter spell? Oh, I had a fork there, but that's not going to help me. Wow, I had some burn and a fork. That was quite interesting. Anyway, this first game, um, you could really see the power of Gauntlet of Might and how useless an energy flux is in the eye of a gauntlet. Yeah. So anyway, this was a really quick game. Let's hope that game number two is going to be a little bit more interesting. Game number two, here we go. Okay, let's see. Looks like I've taken a mulligan here, starting with six in hand. Also wanted to play after that loss in game one. I need to win this one if we want to see a third game here, which I really hope. So Matt starting with a mountain. Ooh, do I have an elemental turn two? Yes, this is what I want to do. Here we see earth elemental turn two. Let's hope that it sticks. No, um, okay, whatever, man, whatever. Yeah, I hope you're proud of yourself, Matt. This is brutal. That Earth Elemental's gone, and now I've got that Mana Vault that's going to slowly hurt me as well. Far from ideal, and let's just hope that Matt cannot find that Gauntlet. There we see a Chaos Orb on the side of Matt. Tapping more land, so next turn, possibly I could or play another land and cast another Elemental or untap my Mana Vault. There's a Gauntlet of Might again. Okay, that can kind of help, actually. Okay, Counterspell. <laughs> I want to say maybe it can help me, but I guess after that uh, first game, I decided, okay, whenever I see a Gauntlet, I have to take care of it. I have to get rid of it. Playing another land passing turn after untapping that Mana Vault. But, I mean, Matt still's got a lot of lands, five lands. 
Uh, it looks like he's just passing turns. So maybe he's just uh, not really drawing into anything at the moment. I've got six. I'm not finding anything else. Just passing turn here. There we see a granite gargoyle. And here we go. Another mountain. And this is kind of, it looks like I've kind of hit a dead end here. I'm going to try to burn away. Okay, I'm going to play a stone rain just on a mountain and pass turn. So I do have a lot of mana, but only one card in hand. There is a wall of fire. Okay, so that's not too bad. Taking two from the gargoyle. You're going to go down to 16. Wheel of fortune and playing that bolt on a gargoyle. That's actually really nice. Matt gave me that opening here, and I have to say, Matt, I really, really respect it that you play that uh, Wheel of Fortune. It's just a lot of fun. Wheel is always nice, and that means this game is completely back on playing a Volcanic Island here. Uh, I, can, I can just play a huge, I don't know, Fireball or something. Okay, playing a Water Elemental instead, and an Air Elemental, and another Mana Vault. So casting two huge creatures, let's hope they stick. I mean, especially the water elemental feels kind of shaky with all the earthquakes in Matt's deck. We'll just have to see. And he can actually, I can actually trade my water elemental for the wall of fire if I choose to attack. And remember, Matt still has that chaos orb on board. Ooh, again, a chain and a bolt. We saw that on the earth elemental earlier. I mean, it is a two for one, so it's not too bad for me, but I just want to, you know, keep my creatures afloat. And there's an earthquake. And uh, an Earthquake for four, so that's going to kill my Water Elemental and it's going to keep his Fire Elemental and I'm going to take damage. And that is exactly what Matt wants to do with his deck. He wants to take care of my creatures and at the same time he kind of wants to deal damage to me as well. And that's what Earthquake does for you. There is another creature from my side. I wonder if it's going to be enough. I'm on 12, he's on 16. There is a Dragon Whelp. And that is also kind of a problem. Still three cards in hand, lots of mana. Let's see what I can do here, playing another island. Is there a way for me to get rid of the whelp and maybe get some damage in? There's a disintegrate on the dragon whelp, disintegrate for three here. So the dragon whelp's gone and I'm attacking him for four. I wonder if he's gonna flip. He's deciding to flip. Let's see if he can hit it. There we go. Ooh, we missed it. So lucky for me that he's missing the orb flip. Wow, that kind of feels like a freebie here for me. A hit for four to Matt. I finally managed to deal some, uh, some damage with my elementals here. So Matt's on 12. That means only three more hits. But I'm kind of expecting him to, uh, to play a burn spell here on my air elemental. But we'll just have to see. He's got to be pretty low on cards by now. And I just feel really lucky that he missed that flip. There's another wall of fire that's not going to stop my flyer. Going to untap. Play a mountain. I'm going to attack again, so I'm going to put him on 8 here. And this is interesting. Going to pass turn. So I'm really going to try to get him down two more turns. Two more attacks with the air elemental. And it's a 1-1. One, one. Going to go to four. What am I doing here? And casting an earthquake. Oh, there's a fork. And another fork. Man, and that means it's a draw. That means it's a draw, isn't it? Oh, man, that is ridiculous. So kind of what happened here? Um, I'm playing an earthquake for four. He's copying it and he's copying it, but I think it means that I've won because he's going to take uh, the damage of one of the resolved earthquakes first before the other earthquakes resolve, right? So I assume that the last fork that he plays goes on top of the stack. So that one resolves first, meaning we both take four damage and then uh, Matt is dead. So it doesn't mean it's a 1-1. One -one. I think there was nothing else that he could do here uh, looking at his hand. So that means it's 1-1. One -one. Oh, but... So interesting, man, this game. Um, and I'm actually happy that we get to see a third one. So let's get ready for game number three. Game number three, here we go. Who's gonna win this one? Looks like I'm starting with a basic island passing turn here and there's Matt with a mountain. There's an island from my side tapping. There's a mana vault, probably just drew into that. 
So perhaps next turn I can start casting an elemental here. There's a Chaos Orb from Matt and a pass. So it looks like I don't have an elemental in hand or perhaps a red one that I need two red. Just at that volcanic island, there we see a Granite Gargoyle met by a quick lightning bolt taking care of the Gargoyle. Five cards in hand now, 20 for both players here. Tapping four, what is it gonna be? There's an energy flux. That is kind of problematic here for Matt. So he's gotta pay two or is he just gonna flip? Deciding to flip, what is he going to flip on? That's the question. And he's actually gonna flip on the energy flux. Interesting, because we saw in game one that energy flux, I mean, it's annoying for Matt, but as soon as he's got a gauntlet on the battlefield, it doesn't really matter that much. Taking a damage from my own mana vault and passing turn here. There is another Granite Gargoyle. Do I have another Bolt? No, I do not. Deciding to untap the Mana Vault and passing turn here. So that means Matt can start attacking me for two at least, dealing some damage. He's got a little bit of a land problem there. Tapping another Granite Gargoyle and a pass turn. Drawing for turn here. Let's see what I can do. Tapping five, playing a fire elemental, five, four. That means I can attack and then possibly Matt can double block, pump the gargoyle so he only needs to invest one gargoyle into killing my elemental. So I wonder if I'm actually gonna attack. On the other hand, my whole strategy is just attacking. And it looks like I'm gonna take a damage from the mana vault. So I'm gonna go to 16, play out another land what am I going to do here? Looks like I'm going to go attack. There we see a bolt being played on the fire elemental and a block here by the gargoyle. And I think he could have done that differently. If he, if he double blocks and he pumps his gargoyles, then I only have five powers, so... Although, no, I don't think he would make that. No, because I've got five power to spend. So he's not going to make it. So I'm playing another fire elemental. So this was a good call by Matt. So he's killing one of my fire elementals here. With that bolt and a block by the gargoyle. I'm just playing out another one. There's a dragon whelp. And if there's one thing that my deck can do really well, just playing out elementals, taking another damage of the mana vault. Does that mean that I have another elemental in hand? Dealing five here and playing an air elemental. And I actually believe that's a mistake. I could have untapped the mana vault and casted that air elemental. So I should have done that instead of taking the damage of the mana vault. So a little mistake on my side. And ooh, an earthquake. So here I'm gonna take damage again and lose a creature. This is really good news for Matt. So I'm gonna go to 11, he's also on 11. I'm gonna untap my mana vault. Gonna draw for turn. And I'm not gonna attack, I don't wanna risk it. I don't wanna attack and then have the drawback of those two flyers. There we see a Gauntlet of Might responded by a quick counter spell. I wonder if Matt's gonna attack with the Whelp. I, I think it would be a good decision for him actually. He is, he's gonna attack with both of them, wow. So deciding to block the Dragon Whelp, making that trade, taking two. And I guess that was a good decision by Matt because he could still pump the Gargoyle to 2-5 so he could take the 4 damage from the Air Elemental. And what am I going to do here? Playing a Fireball. Going to deal some damage to Matt and kill the Gargoyle. So he's going to drop to 8. So this is quite an exciting third game. He's got enough mana for a Sheevan. We haven't seen a Sheevan Dragon yet. That would be kind of sweet. Well, at least for Matt it would. And for the game it would, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, yeah, of course, she even dragon, yeah. That may oh, counterspell. Oh, I feel so bad, but also very happy because it she even would have kicked my ass. So I'm gonna untap the mana vault, draw for turn here, tap five, another elemental. Wow, I wonder if Matt can actually win this one. He needs to get rid of that earth elemental there, and of course, he gets rid of the earth elemental. Wow, another fork. So he's also, oh, he's going to put it on my life total. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I was so focused on my own earth elemental. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So 
wait, okay, okay, okay. We're gonna look at that again. So what Matt did here is he cast a bolt, forked it twice, being able to deal nine damage with one lightning bolt. Wow, Matt, man, you've earned this victory. And it's really cool to see Fork playing such a big part in this matchup. It was just a lot of fun to play against your Gauntlet Red deck. Very, very nice. Um, and I would also like to uh, to thank you, of course, for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And remember, if you have any questions or any comments, anything you want to share at all, leave it in the comment section below. And um, yeah, I'll ask Matt to check it out as well if you have any questions about his plays or if you have any questions about my plays i'll uh, i'll check them out as well and try to answer them as uh, as good as i can to the best of my knowledge you know i'm not a, i'm not a pro but i can try i can dream anyway uh thank you for watching another episode and uh before you go please consider clicking that like button please consider becoming a subscriber it all helps a lot i actually have a really cool animation that you saw at the start of the video so i'm just gonna show it to you right now here is the animation clickety clickety click clack how cool is that isn't that nice i mean i'm getting more professional you know i'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with myself right now anyway um once again thank you for watching and if you want to uh, help the channel in another way than just subscribing leaving a comment and liking uh, another thing you can do is you can also become a patron of the channel uh, just like Matt actually is also a patron of the channel. The cool thing is uh, you can join our Discord, you can join the Timmy Talks tournaments. We've got a really cool Ice Age tournament coming up in December. So if you enjoy Ice Age, it could be worth uh, joining the Patreon program just for that tournament. And, and you can join us in December and January for the Ice Age battle. Um, and also we have a little Discord where uh, you can meet all the other patrons and we just talk a lot of BS about magic. It's kind of fun. And um, last but not least, your name will be mentioned on the end scroll, in the end credits. How cool is that? Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ik het als ik het als somba kan zien.